Lions TV, we are sponsored by Regal Elevators and Lifts Consultants Limited, a company that is owned and operated by a Millwall fan, just like every single one of the sponsors that you can see in and around me. If you are going to do a bit of business, then please keep it in the Millwall family by checking out all of our sponsors' website links in the description below. Welcome to Monday Club. We obviously drew on Friday at the Den, live on Sky Sports against Nottingham Forest 2-2. We look forward to tomorrow's trip to Bristol City at Ashton Gate. And of course, the under-23s play today at the Den. So I just thought I'd tie it all in to one show instead of doing three separate ones. And you haven't got to look at my ugly mug on three separate occasions. We can get it all done under this one proverbial roof. Let's start out with Friday's home game against Nottingham Forest at the Den. First thing is first, I suppose I should tell you why I wasn't at the Den on Friday. I'll be honest with you, um, I didn't really fancy it anyway. Uh, it's not often we're on the telly, and it's nice to sometimes, as a Millwall fan, take advantage of looking at it from that other side, seeing a decent bit of build-up, a few interviews, a video from in and around the club, which obviously we don't usually get being a championship team. And it's just good to get, especially with my mince pies, a, a better perspective, or probably a better view on the telly, if we're honest, with uh, the better camera angles, etc., just a different way to look at the game. Also, obviously, the trip to Birmingham I did the Saturday before and the trip to Swansea I did the Saturday before that and they're going to Bristol City tomorrow. I just wasn't sure whether I fancied it. I picked Minnie me up from school because his nan fell out of the loft on Friday and she was in hospital. So not my mum, his other nan. So um, that decision was sort of made for us. We got back here, it's pissing down and, and we just decided to sit on a sofa and watch it. And I'm glad I did. I'm glad I did. Um, the, the crowd obviously, obviously suffered. You could all see that. There wasn't many fans there at all. And it can happen, unfortunately. I just didn't fa just fancy having a night off, which is why I did it. And I felt like I need to explain to you why I wasn't there. But as I said, I'll be back on Lions TV duty tomorrow at Bristol City. Getting into the game, it was an unchanged side again from the team that drew 1-1 at Birmingham, obviously, the previous Saturday um, the one thing that's worrying me about all this is Tom Bradshaw. And listen, I'm not starting rumours. I'm not saying anything, you know, untoward and, and, and trying to get views and create create um, carnage. I can't understand why he's not starting. And when you try and break it down, well, look, one, the gaffer could have said, look, it's, it's a, you know, we've gone on the same side. They've got a good result at Birmingham. Although Matt Smith missed so many chances in that game, I can't understand why Bradshaw wouldn't have started. Two... The manager doesn't possibly fancy Bradshaw. Three, um, is it something to do with his injury? You know, obviously he was out for a very long time with reconstructive surgery on his ACL. And I'm just not sure if he can maybe, you know, manage too, too many games at once. I'm not sure. I'm just, throwing, I'm just throwing ideas into the mix. And four, the one that I really hope isn't true, and I'm pretty sure it's not true, in my mind, I'm thinking maybe he's off in January. He scored a lot of goals for us in, in a very short space of time. Looks sharper than ever. And for him to now just be sort of dropped out of the side after scoring five and seven, I think it was something like that. Maybe, you know, maybe he's, he, he could be off in January. But listen, I'm only I'm only guessing now. I was just throwing that in there as an idea. Hopefully, that is definitely not the case. And Bradshaw is staying. But other than that, yeah, I can understand why the rest of the, why the, rest of the team retain their place. We started well, we did start well, and Jeb Wallace, again, was was next level. It was next level shit. Actually sitting here with Mini-Me, and Mini-Me was saying to the, uh, to the Sky commentator, shut up, shut up, stop saying how good he is, because he's going to get sold. Uh, the post-match interview, by the way, that he did on Sky, with had no Brian, they sort of put it on him a little bit. And for me, it didn't look good uh, for us, again, not trying to cause havoc or anything, but for us trying to retain Jed, so I'm looking over there, because that's what the telly is, uh, for us trying to retain Jed as a club, uh, it, didn't, it didn't look good, did it, after the game, what he said. But um, no, he, didn't, he didn't say anything he shouldn't have said. But they, they sort of put it on him and he just said, you know, I'm happy to play football where I'm playing football and we'll see what happens in January. But yeah, the first half, Jeb was brilliant. And I will say this, and again, you know, I may get a bit hate for it, I may not. But I just say what I see. Jed in the first half put in about 11 crosses. I think I counted at one point, 11 balls. He, he crosses or balls into the box. Um... Seven of them didn't hit their target. Seven of them hit the first man, didn't go where they were supposed to have gone. But, you know, as we said, if he gets 11 out of 11, right, then obviously he's definitely not... He'd be in the Premier League, Jed, without a doubt. If he could, if his final delivery was as good as the rest of his game, he would be playing in the Prem without an absolute doubt. 
And it still looks like it might be anyway. But yeah, listen, okay, all these deliveries wasn't great in the first half. But just to get yourself in the position to be able to put that amount of balls into the box is phenomenal in itself in one half of football. And he was he was nutmegging people. He was throwing dummies left, right and centre. And he was brilliant. And it's through a Jeb Wallace corner that we take the lead after 11 minutes. Great ball, great whip. Sean Williams sort of gets around the back of a player and, and obviously then you, their eye's not on you. You can give them the slip. Sean Williams gives them a slip. Two goals in two games for the wand. And again, I keep saying it, I think he's thriving under Gary Rowett. I don't think he was bad under Neil Harris. But, um, yeah, a lot of people didn't rate him. A few people actually now, some of his biggest critics uh, towards me about him, have now come on board and said, yes, he has definitely, definitely improved under Gary Rowett. And I think, if you hadn't seen it already, he's one of the best players. And aside Sean Williams, the way he retains the ball, he gives us something different. And Friday, by the way, was Sean Williams' 250th appearance for the club. So... Well done to the wand. I've said it before and I say it again. You know, I've always been a, a massive a supporter of him. And for the simple reason, you know, 250 games out of the man who's still going strong at the club, still scoring goals, still a first team player. For the pittance we paid for him, as, as, as in what we've got out of him as a player, long may it continue. And I think it will continue under Gary Rowett. Um, after that, we had the chances to kill him off, didn't we? They were, they were poor, not in the forest. They didn't look like they wanted to know, really, to be honest with you at all. But... You know, we didn't take our chances, and I tweeted at half time that we need to uh, prepare ourselves for the impending sort of, um, not shit storm, but the, impairing, the impending pressure that's going to be coming our way. There's no way a team in sort of third, fourth place, wherever they was before the game kicked off, with a good young manager. They're not going to have that. He's going he's gonna to rile them up at half time. And he did just that, and off the bench comes Pew Beard. Uh, awful beard. I don't know what that, it just looks like a dirty soapy bastard, doesn't he? He just needs to shave that fucking beard off. But um he comes off the bench and he scores the equaliser. Uh ironically he does what Sean Williams done for our goal to Sean Williams and he sort of gets around the back of him, one one. The wand caught a little bit napping there, and it is one one. It happened again not long after, and, and he sort of this time gets behind Cooper. And uh, for as much as I praise Williams, I also praise Cooper. Watching Cooper from a different perspective on the box and getting more replays and better coverage. I thought he looked a bit shaky uh, defensive-wise, if I'm honest. Um, Jake Cooper on Friday, and that's not to say I'm not really an angle that I usually get to see him from, so maybe that's opened my eyes to a couple of defensive problems that we that we have. Um, and then, yeah, it looks like it's game over, doesn't it? They score again. Ironically, again, Gary Rowett does... What he's been doing, we're, 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 I think we was still 1-0 up when we made the change. Matt Smith comes off, but Varson and Bradshaw came on to sort of, you know, go for what I like to call the Gary Rowett influence, where he likes to say, OK, you're on top now. The best form of defence is attack, and let's not sit back and rest on our laurels. Let's try and press forward and give you something to worry about and re relieve the pressure at our end defensively. So it didn't work, and they scored 86 minute. Lewis grabbing again. Look, he's a, he's a striker that scored two tappings, and he's but he's still got to have good movement and you know to, to get three defenders and get himself in the good positions that he did. And it's two one, and it looks like game over. And I'm thinking back to the last time that I watched us on telly, and that was at home to Blackburn last season, one of the worst displays I've seen in a long time from us. So I'm starting to think that maybe I've jinxed it by staying indoors and watching it. But out of nowhere, Sean Williams, long range pop shot. Uh, if it's our goalkeeper, I'm probably um, I'm probably you know I'm not happy with it if our goalkeeper doesn't um, doesn't save that. But look at the, the replay from behind the goal, sort of behind from behind Sean Williams, he's back, and he puts a lot of swaz on that, a lot of swazzle burger, a lot of um, a lot of swerve. The keeper parries it, and Aiden O'Brien again, similar to Lewis Grabber, just gets in in positions, always seems to pop up where he needs to be. And the onion bag does exactly what he said he used to do on the tin, and he gets I think that's his second goal of the season. His last one was. Away at West Brom in the Carabao Cup, if I'm not mistaken. But if he, has, if he ain't getting game time, then he can't score goals. So only Aiden's second goal of the season, but he hasn't spent a lot of time on the pitch lately, has he? Especially sort of in more advanced positions. And as I say, I think he's very good to utilise. You know, he will bring, he will come on a lot of the time, sort of left mid or right mid, but he pushes so far forward because he, he comes out of that position he probably should be in. And it, it adds, you know, it gives you another impetus going forward towards the end of a game when you could really need it and it's exactly what we needed and it's exactly what we got a 2-2 draw and as Connor rightly said and a few boys said you know, was it a good point or was it too dropped I'm going to say it's a good point again looking at results yesterday it's gone our way a little bit and, and we are I think now 11 points clear of the drop zone so ideally yes we want to be winning games against good sides but if you look at our last three games Birmingham 
Swansea and Nottingham Forest. You know, these aren't easy teams. They're big established clubs in this division. And I feel now that we are creeping towards that sort of stature as well. This is our third season back in the champ. And I say with full confidence, I'll put me, um, I'll put it on the line and say we are not going. We're definitely, you know, we're going to be very safe this season. Possibly by February, hopefully. That'll be beautiful. March, we'll be safe. And then it'll be good to see some of the younger players to, to come in and get involved. Like I'll get on to them in a minute. But... Before I wrap up, you know, look, it is a good point. We could have had chances to win it. We should have killed him off in the first half, but we didn't. So we can't, you know, we can't rest on that. We can't say, oh, we should have killed him off. We didn't kill him off. We had the chances, but didn't make it happen. And again, was their keeper too troubled other than the goal in the first half? I know we had a lot of possession, a lot of chances. Um, I think Romeo had a shot, which he saved well to his left. But other than that, you can't say we had shitloads of shots. And <sighs> Cooper, second half, he's got to score that straight at the keeper. We should have had a penalty as well. Um, I think it was on Bradshaw toward, towards the end. And again, in real time, I don't think it was a penalty. Looking back on the replays on Sky, it was an absolute definite penalty. Deliberate, like non, well, not a deliberate non-attempt to play the ball, if you know what I'm saying. Across, Bradshaw gets his foot there. And as the Sky commentators rightly said, it was a penalty. But, listen, it's still a good point on the board. And as I said, I think we're sort of 13th, 14th, 15th now. And I'm very confident of survival this season. So before we move on to tomorrow night's game at Ashton Gate, the under-23s play today at the Den. Another very good win for Kevin Nugent's young side. We beat Ipswich by four, four goals to one. And he said three, then I remembered it was four right late on. Four goals to one. I didn't get this today, unfortunately. I should have got there, but I just got to film this and get this out. And by the time I would have got back from the Den, it would have been, it would have been a bit of a rush. Maybe I've just been a lazy bastard this Monday, but... I didn't get there, and now, to be honest, I'm pissed off myself that I didn't because he looks like a very, very another good win for um, for Kevin Nugent's team. Goals from George Alexander from, from the penalty spot after Julie Tienza won the penalty. Um, Dan Moss scored an absolute screamer, which I would have loved to have seen because I don't think he's the best, but a good goal from Dan Moss. Well done to him. Third goal from Harvey Bradbury on his way back from injury. So well done to the big man up front. And finally, Junior Tienza gets on the overlap and gets on the score sheet himself. So it sounds like a brilliant performance from Tienza alone as well as the whole team. Billy Mitchell played the first 45 minutes and then was taken off. So I, you know, I've got a feeling he'll probably travel with the first team squad tomorrow on the back of that. But yeah, George Alexander again gets on the score sheet. OK, it's only a penalty, but we keep saying what's the best place for these young players. And I, I genuinely feel that the under-23s is strong for, for, for our Millwall, our Millwall um, youth development players. I really do. You know, we're playing against, OK, Ipswich today, not so much. But there's a lot of good sides in there, a lot of premiership sides with teams in the under-23 development league. And I just feel that they're, if they're sticking together, they're playing together, they're developing together, uh, scoring goals, it's, 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 you know, it's good for them all. So good to see, good result for Kevin Nugent and Paul Robinson, of course, back at the club and our turning fortunes with a 23. And I think that's no coincidence that that's happened since uh, Paul Robinson's come back to the club. So, yeah, well done to him. Well done to Kevin Nugent and the boys on the score sheet today at the Den. And so we move on to tomorrow night's game. We are away, as I said, to Bristol City at Ashton Gate. They are managed by Lee Johnson. They currently sit fourth in the championship. They are a good, strong championship side and they spent well in the summer. They spent big in the summer. Most notably, Daniel Bentley coming, the goalkeeper from Brentford, previously of Southend, who has um, faulted us on many occasions. Great goalkeeper. And look, we always go on about big... Well, I always, I always go on about big clubs, little clubs. Bristol City, to pay £4 million for a goalkeeper is definitely a statement of intent, but nothing out of keeping in this division. But um, he's a great signing for them. They're doing well. They have only lost one of their last eight league games, and that was uh, to league leaders West Bromwich Albion. So they'll be they'll be expecting three points. But could that work against them like it did for Swansea? I'll go there quietly confident tomorrow. We've had a couple of good results there last couple of years. Last year was a 1-1 draw on a Sunday. Sean Williams got a goal, so um, he'll be open to repeat that and get three and three. Probably more goals than he scored in the season if he does manage to do it. Um, and year before that, it was a nil-nil draw. Was that possibly on a Sunday as well? I remember going up there. I think Fred Onyadimba missed a late chance, and we drew nil-nil. So, again, look, they'll be looking for three points against us. We won't make it easy for them. We're doing okay away from home now. Two great away performances in a row. Oh, it's going to be a tough one. It's almost prediction time. Before I do predict it, I'm going to tell you that the one to watch for them, there he is, it's Josh Brownhill. The 23-year-old central midfielder is captain of the team and he has scored two goals in his last two games and he will be looking like Sean Williams to make it three and three when we visit Ashton Gate tomorrow night. 
So this is your pre-match prediction, and here we go. I was going to go for a 1-0 Millwall win, but ooh, I don't know. Do you know what? I think I'm going to go for a draw. I said draw against Wigan. I got it right. I said draw against Birmingham. I got it right. I actually thought draw against Nottingham Forest, but I was trying to be a bit more positive. I think I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw again, and it could be a little bit of a stalemate. It could be a little bit of a midweek non-event, but in the cold light of day, you've got to be honest, we'll absolutely take it. So that is your lot for this Monday club. I hope you've enjoyed it, boys and girls. There should be a fan score predictions going out in and around this VT, hopefully, if the boys can get off their asses and stick them on the WhatsApp group. I'll get them edited and out tonight. And I'll see you in Bristol tomorrow night if you are going. Please subscribe to Lions TV. Come on, you Lions.